The first thing to point out is that the evidence itself in the field is very, very weak. Um, this isn't kind of tends to be because there are conceptual challenges, methodological challenges, operational challenges. So for example, everyone talks about the attribution problem. And that's basically saying, how can we prove that something's working if the evidence for something working is that something hasn't happened? So you're trying to prove a negative. You know, there are also challenges in terms of monitoring and evaluation, how costly they can be. We know that CVE projects in particular tend to be very, very small um, and sometimes very short term. And so it can be hard to integrate um, kind of complex monitoring and evaluation systems into them. So we end up in a kind of situation where we're kind of going, well, what works and what doesn't? Now, I think a convincing way to go around this um, is to define the problem of violent extremism in a particular area, to be able to identify the particular factors that are contributing to violent extremism, the at-risk groups and their particular vulnerabilities, and to then design interventions around those risk factors. And if you can prove that you're impacting on certain behavioral, attitudinal, knowledge-based gains or changes, you have what we would call a good contribution story to say, even though you might not be able to prove the impact, so you might not be able to see violent extremism decreasing, you have a good contribution story to say, but what we're doing should hopefully have some impact, even if it can't be seen. So that's where we're at with that, I think. So Rusi has been working on what we've called the evidence base for PCVE over the last two years. So we've gathered masses of documents that we can find, everything from peer reviewed material to evaluations and to grey literature. And from that, what we've tried to explore is what's working, in brackets, what's not, um, in relation to different types of interventions. From that, I think what we can kind of confidently say, despite the rigor that I think exists uh, in terms of evaluations themselves, um, context is the most important. So if you can define, as I said earlier, the problem of violent extremism, and you can um, design an intervention that matches that problem and matches the individuals or the groups of individuals that are affected by the problem of violent extremism, you have a better chance of success. Now that means that we should tend to promote integrated responses. So not just a kind of one-off communications approach, but actually, um, for example, a mentorship approach that would address the socioeconomic, the ideological, the pragmatic factors that may be behind an individual joining a violent extremist group. We've got ex examples of kind of where that I think has been working slightly better. So at RUSI we have something called preventive communications and that basically takes the uh, kind of turns the concept of communications on its head and it makes the individuals who have been identified to be vulnerable to radicalization agents of their own communication um, campaigns. And so in doing so, they create positive news stories, um, you know, particularly around youth. Um, we've done this in Kenya where youth are often seen as, they're often marginalized or they're often talked down about. Um, so it's engaging with young people, particularly in poor um, areas which are affected by violent extremism and getting them to tell their stories. And the process of telling their stories not only generates really interesting and engaging content for other young people, but it also teaches them skills about how to do communications, which are commercial skills that they can then take on elsewhere. Um, and at the same time, they feel that they've been listened to, which is part of the battle in and of itself. So in programs I've looked at in Indonesia and Bangladesh, actually funded by UN Women, have, and they've actually had an independent evaluation conducted by Monash University at the same time. So they've actually kind of I don't know, confronted the methodological challenge I mentioned earlier. Um, but that's shown that integrating women with um, skills to engage with people in the security sector, building their confidence to discuss issues related to violent extremism, at the same time as empowering them through socioeconomic initiatives, um, and at the same time as having what we would call maybe communications initiatives around the promotion of women's rights and issues to do with violent extremism, that seems to be better equipping 
um, women to deal with some of the complex challenges um, that they're seeing on the ground. Similarly in Kenya, um, another UN Women pro project um, brought together women with members of the security services and facilitated a dialogue, created a network, created trainings, uh, outreach into schools and with young people. And that approach seemed to increase the ability of women not only to kind of deal with the challenges that they were facing in their families or at the community level, but also to share information um, and to actually provide information about particular cases of individuals that they were concerned about. I think probably one of the fields that gets the most attention is um, well, CBE communications. So STRATCOM's campaigns tend to be the go-to government method. Um, and in a way that's to be seen to be doing something. Um, and the evidence would suggest that actually campaigns which focus on counter narratives, so simply countering um, the narratives coming out of a violent extremist group, um, don't actually work because actually what they simply do is either affirm what the violent extremist group is saying or actually don't have much traction with those who are at risk of radicalization because their cognitive ability to actually um, be able to understand a counter viewpoint isn't necessarily there. Um, so instead we've talked about alternative narratives, so providing um, a convincing picture of um, you know, the situation in a country, opportunities, uh, community resilience, um, civic engagement, things like that might be more positive. I'm still not quite sure about that. I think, um, you know, there isn't significant evidence. But what it does seem to show is that the key thing is about the engagement. So approaches where you open up a conversation, where you have a dialogue, where you have the ability to express yourself, the process in and of itself is the thing that's important, actually, rather than necessarily the aim. Mm -hmm.